Hi, everybody. I apologize. I sound kind of congested. I'm getting over a pretty bad cold I had over the weekend. Um, so I'm just going to do a short episode tonight because I've been pretty sick this week. But since we missed um, on Thanksgiving, I didn't really want to miss a second week in a row. I just wanted to talk about and share something I've been having a hard time with that I think a lot of you will be able to relate to. And if you have any comments to share of just advice or wisdom you've learned with your own children, please just share in the comments. My son Bradley is nine years old. Um, If you don't know his story, he was born just under three months early. Um, He was born with a complex congenital heart defect that was completely unrelated to his premature birth. And the first year of his life was pretty terrible. Um, He was in the ICU more often than he wasn't, and he had several surgeries, including open heart surgeries. He had a stroke. He's nine years old now, and really, he's just doing phenomenal. We're really lucky um, and fortunate. But he does have some issues, of course, um, mainly remaining from the stroke and just the fact that he was so sick during the first two years of his life that's kind of set him behind on some things. Um, Bradley has such terrible anxiety and very low self-confidence. And I think you can hear my heart as a mom when I have seen him overcome so much. He came into this world weighing one pound, 14 ounces. The first time I saw him, I'd never seen a premature baby before. Um, actually, I didn't get to see him until he was a couple of days old because my own health was um, not stable or was pretty critical. So I couldn't go to the NICU right away after he was born. Um, but anyway, I was being rolled into the NICU, his pod, in a wheelchair to see him for the first time. And I looked over and I saw the tiniest baby I had ever seen. And I just remember thinking, oh my God, look at that tiny baby, those poor parents, how terrible. And then right then the wheelchair started to turn towards his incubator and I realized that was my baby and he was so tiny you could see all the bones through his skin he I just remember he was breathing so rapidly and anytime somebody touched him he cried and he I mean he sounded like a a kitten it wasn't even a, a baby's cry and I just remember thinking how could he possibly survive but he did We had some physical therapists tell me when he was three years old that he would never walk independently or 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 that he would but he wouldn't be able to walk very far he would get really tired Um, he would always have a wheelchair or an orthotics on his legs Um, he cannot walk or run normally but um, he doesn't have to wear orthotics and actually his favorite thing to do in the world is to go hiking which he does for hours at a time without getting tired he doesn't need a wheelchair Um, if he did obviously I would fight for the best wheelchair that would serve his needs but um, but he can't run as fast as other children he cannot speak clearly he has a lot of issues with the upper half of his body on his left side um his left core muscles are very weak and that he does fall a lot because it makes it hard for him to balance and he can run um just not as fast as other children he has basically no use of his left hand outside of like if he's holding a hot wheels car he can take his right hand and place it into his left hand and and hold it that's He can't, like, on his own pick something up with his left hand at this time. I think his biggest issue is that people have a hard time understanding him when he speaks. Um, I don't know how much better that's going to get over time. He cannot move 
the muscles on the left side of his mouth properly because of the stroke and so he just can't pronounce words very well anyway um, those are just a summation of his issues he's been bullied really terribly at playgrounds and stuff we don't really go to them anymore because he'll walk up to kids and try to talk to them and they they can't understand what he's saying so they just pretend like he's not talking to him and actually a couple years ago um, we went to a playground and we were getting out of our truck and he said I hope the kids here can see me mom and I realized he literally believed that sometimes he was invisible and that people could not see him or hear him because that's how he's so often treated and I know that has contributed so much to his low self-confidence he's so afraid to try things when something's really hard he just has an absolute meltdown or will just refuse to try and when I try to encourage him he just says things that show he feels so badly about himself I just wish he could see himself the way I see him because I see a child who had all the odds for even his survival stacked against him but he did pull through he's also accomplished things that I was told he would never be able to accomplish but I know that's not his perspective I feel like we've worked on this with him for years and the improvement has been very minimal he still just sees himself as a kid that other kids don't like I finally got him to find some words to tell me why he struggles so much to have confidence I don't want to share and um, invade his privacy but basically it is how kids treat him so often and just that he sees people doing stuff all the time that he's not able to do that he needs help with I know a lot of you are facing much bigger battles than I am but still I know all of us just want our children to be happy and Bradley is happy a lot of the time but to me he's just so strong and he doesn't know it maybe you have some thoughts maybe it's just nice to have someone to relate to maybe you're feeling a lot of the same things and I hope just hearing that you're not alone in that can help you um, I wrote two poems recently for him um, I'm by far not a highly experienced professional poet but um, it's something I've been pursuing more lately and it's just been an outlet for me and I'd like to share those with you now thunder roared winds howled and you were born a tiny soul weathering a raging storm amidst so much doubt uncertainty and fear your spirit emerged bold and clear resting on my chest such a fragile frame inside a fierce dragon you ignited life's flame hopeless and lost I looked and there a flicker of light it was your heart a beacon determined to fight clenching tiny fists courage stitched into your veins you persisted and clung to hope's strain a resilient melody scribed in your scars a warrior my son that's who you are a stroke made its mark and in hushed whispers they said he'll never walk I'm sorry that's what we've read against the odds you took your stand and with every step you told life you are in command yet in the shadows of triumph I see your disbelief caused by a hand that feels too weak look within my son 
where courage resides, your song is still singing, you'll find. Chase your dreams, hold them tight. You've already proven your persistence and your might. Don't doubt yourself after going to such lengths. Don't question your worth, your value, or your strength. Your smile and joy, they will carry you through. Look through my eyes if you must and see how I see you. The tale of your journey, one that lets me know, if you set your mind to it, there is nowhere you can't go. Look to your scars, then close your eyes and hear their story once again. The echoes of a fragile heartbeat, battles fought by a tiny soul. Three months too soon you emerged, barely the size of my hand. A warrior in the making. Yes, that's you. From your heart came a song, a resilient melody, your song of defiance against all who had doubts. A stroke brushed across your canvas, leaving its permanent mark. Still, you created your own destiny. You became what they said you could not be. Their prophecies fell to dust. You'd never walk? My boy, you run! That's what you did. Your hand, I see it. It grasps your self-doubt. Open that hand, set yourself free. Ability wears many kinds of clothes. Words may trip and stumble, but don't be afraid to speak. Your rhythm sings its song. The echo of your laughter speaks your truth. You have nothing left to prove, for your symphony still can be heard. Beautifully, remarkably, incredibly, and wholly capable. That is who you are. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week.